you will not have a right time to do things these market cycles will always be there so extremely bullish is not not good for you extremely bearish is not good for you the only thing that you can do is to focus on your vision focus on your mission and then keep the community you know informed Hello and welcome everyone to the Balthazar NFT Gaming Podcast. This is episode 19 and today Nico and I are joining Serini to talk about Bullyverse. Bullyverse is bringing multiple types of games to the table in their own type of metaverse including games that can be played both on PC and mobile devices. So sit back and enjoy as we dig deeper with the founder Serini about Bullyverse. Well, welcome everyone to the Balthazar NFT Gaming Podcast. Today I have Nico with me from Balthazar and of course our lovely guest, Serini from Bullyverse. So Serini, how's it going? Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your project Bullyverse? Yes, of course. It's going great. Uh, that's what everyone says, right? But actually, it's actually going really great. <laughs> so uh, why it is going great? So I'll, probably I'll start with introducing myself first. I'm Srini. I'm co-founder of uh, Bullyverse. I like to call myself as a herd champion. Like we are a herd of bulls <laughs> and I'm kind of uh, uh, helping our herd, you know, go in the right direction. So the like I, I, I live in London. I've been here for more than a decade. Uh, I worked in uh, previously in my past corporate life, worked in uh, investment banks like Goldman Sachs, UBS as a software engineer, uh, built tech there. And uh, back in 2016, I was part of a team building an Oracle for smart contracts and how I got into Web3 really. And you know, this rabbit, rabbit hole is deep, right? So <laughs> never happened to come out of it yet. So going deeper and de deeper. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been an uh, engineer, entrepreneur, investor, community member in this space. Uh, I truly believe in it. I, I truly believe in decentralization, blockchain and how, how it can uh, empower the uh, citizens, you know, uh, users. <laughs> Of this ecosystem and uh and uh yeah i've been uh, uh after around 2018 2019 i worked on a, a DeFi protocol to create a pay-to-pay -pay lending uh for erc20 tokens launched it at the br brutal bear market and uh yeah no no users <laughs> so but i think the the market dynamics changed more than pay-to-pay -pay lending actually protocol to uh, lending actually took off like compound if you see uh some good learning lessons there and also uh, did uh, a pivot to create an enterprise blockchain, worked with a uh, uh, state government to build al algorithmically verifiable credit scores. Did some cool work, got some rewards and stuff like that, but uh, it, it didn't become a business that we can monetize and you know, uh, make it successful, particularly with the pandemic, right? So it kind of <laughs> killed, killed a lot of dinosaurs in this world. So uh, they, again, like, you know, um, lockdowns happened. Uh, happened to kill a lot of us playing Fortnite myself. I've, I've been playing games since I was eight years old. Uh, started with Mario, right? And, uh, and, and there then, you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, in between, I was like studies, college, and a lot of things like work. Uh, but again, lockdown is kind of that moment where, you know, you get a bunch of time. You already are, uh, you know, out of my first startup, uh, which which didn't take off. And I was involved in crypto and Web3 naturally, you know, got into NFTs here around that time and uh, uh, happened to uh, buy a board app early April, joined that community and I've seen how these NFTs are an incredibly amazing tool at creating online communities and uh, and wanted to create my app into a 3D avatar. Right? Actually, I wanted to play a Fortnite or such kind of games with this avatar. And uh, I, uh, I spent more than what I actually bought that NFT for. To create a 3D model and animate it, right? And such a pleasure in seeing your NFT that you own come to life. And wanted to share that kind of a joy, right? To uh, people who actually own these NFTs, assets. And uh, for a gamer truly to own his avatar or any kind of in-game asset. I understand that, right? So uh, that's why one of the reasons uh, we started Believers with this vision to create a gaming uh, ecosystem. And there is a lot more than gaming to it, right? But we start with NFTs as a primitive building block there and uh, and take it forward from there. So that's my journey and how, you know, got into Bullyverse and why we started it. I'll just pause there for a minute. Yeah, no, I love it. That's a, a really cool story. And it sounds like you've been in this space for quite yeah. a while and have a lot of experience. <laughs> and it's interesting. How do, you, how do you think some of those maybe past uh, 
failures or, or those projects that didn't survive. How does that help you now with this new project? Sure. So one thing I definitely truly understood is uh, when you build anything in Web3, you need to build with the community, for the community first. And uh, that's the approach we took with Bullywars. Like uh, we, we did an enterprise blockchain stuff and really the users are not there to use these products, right? This tech is too complicated. Like, you know, you want to build it for the right people and then grow from there and then onboard uh, people from Web2. So that's something that I've uh, le- learned a hard lesson there. And uh, and apart from that, uh, also like uh, a few assumptions that uh, we took uh, w- while creating the P2P lending uh, was basically uh, like, you know, uh, what works in Web 2 might not work in Web 3, right? Uh, you could you could see big industries uh, ha- successful in P2P lending in Web 2. But uh, when you introduce Web 3, the dynamics change, the tech enables you to do things that are beyond possible in Web2, right? So you see Compound, Awe, and a lot of cool stuff coming out. Uniswap, for example, AMMs. So that's what Web3 is. You know, It's not about porting the existing Web2 tech here and building it for the wrong people, but innovating with what you can do these with new tools and how you can um, build with the right audience who understands how to use this and then grow from there. So that's, that's the approach we are taking, and that's what I learned. Yeah. I love to hear that because I think it's super important as you, as we at Balthazar look at these NFT gaming projects, we look at the experience of not only have they built a game before, but how much Web3 experience do they have? Because you're right, it's just a totally different world. It's a totally different space for building a game, for building an NFT project. It's it's such a different beast to, uh, or bull, I guess, to try to figure out. You're 100% bang on there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but I was actually at NFT NYC. I don't know if you were there as well, but I saw the team there. I got to meet a couple of of your team members there and play the game. It was actually one of the first games that at the conference I actually got to try gameplay. Like there was maybe five total games with gameplay there, so it was kind of cool to play the the bear hunt game. And then now I know you guys got the what is it called the Necrodemic game. So what's the response been from the community so far towards those two games? So uh, first thing, I, I think, uh, um, like, appreciate that you tried our game at NFT NYC. And, uh, and we did a couple of conferences, like a, a non-fungible conference in Lisbon as well. Having a product helped us, you know, get, get some attention during these conferences. And uh, really the approach that we always, you know, wanted, like, took with Bullywars is not to take a couple of years, build a massive game and launch it, right? We want to build with the community and we want to build it in... Web three ways where you know like uh, we we give our uh, NFT holders in access early and get feedback, you know, and build build games going forward. I'll talk about our approach and why we are building more games going into the future. But uh, about Necrodemic, uh, the the response has been uh, amazing. Like um, we we conducted a couple of tournaments uh, in our community, and uh, there is one happening with uh, Merit Circle. Uh, like people are competing to rank up, uh, and uh, uh, and the, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, another couple of tournaments are happening as well, like one with uh, IndieGG, one of the Web3 gaming guilds from India and uh, Good Game Skilled, who is from uh, Southeast Asia. But there are more and uh, happy to share that as we you know, go into the discussions. I, I love to hear about the the esports uh, stuff. Uh, obviously, for for those that don't know, I'm the chief gaming officer at Baltzar, and I come from a professional background in League of Legends. I was the head coach for Fnatic, Origin, and Innocent Pajamas, and um, I always get so happy hearing about games already planning tournaments, already hosting tournaments. You know, even if the product or the game isn't fully finished. Just starting that initial hype, you start getting people coming in, uh, people start getting expectations of future future tournaments to come, and you get those competitive people in at an early stage. Um, that's sort of my entire history with esports. Like I, I've chased games uh, in early developments where it's visible that the game company want to push for esports. Um, I'd love to hear more on the esports angle or, or competitive angle. Um, how much focus is there towards competition? Like, like how much does that matter for Bullyverse as a whole? 
So, I mean, one thing that's very close to my heart is uh, uh, how the esports as it exists today is fundamentally going to be disrupted with Web3, right? We have a uh, we have some special tools here. Uh, right now, existing esports, the incentives are not always aligned. Like you have, you know, you need to pay players a premium, right? A salary, irrespective of how your org is functioning. And uh, you, you you got to bear a lot of costs as an organization who conducts these uh, tournaments to build your IP. And uh, the incentives are not aligned with the game publishers and the spo- you know organizations themselves and the players always. But it's an, a vibrant, amazing community, that, right? If we could align these in, uh, incentives properly, leveraging Web3 and uh, kind of bring in the market, open marketplace effects into this ecosystem, this is going to take off in a big way. And a lot of uh, competitions could be conducted very seamlessly and, and uh, new IP can be created uh, by players across the globe for a very minimal cost. So, so that's the fundamental change that's going to happen. And uh, that's the reason why we lo- we are launching competitions. We are always looking at uh, creating that competitive element into the games using, you know, uh, and uh, and the reason why we are going to dream hack Hyderabad event next this week, uh, happen- happening between 4th and 6th. Uh, there are about uh, uh, 20,000 gamers across India going to come. And uh, and the content that's, uh, uh, that's uh, streamed from there is potentially going to get 20 million views across Indian gaming ecosystem, right? And this is a huge audience. And I'm just talking about India here, but there are there are a lot more if you go into Vietnam, Philippines, and Indonesia and other locations. And and not to forget about US and Latin America, right? Like we, we uh, and, and Africa, in, in fact. So we have these different um, uh, uh, little ec- ecosystems, IPs across the world, uh, building, building esports titles and, you know, players to compete against. But I think... Uh, this whole dynamic is going to change when this becomes a free market and open and uh, for people to create new kind of titles, IP for co- competing and anybody can participate from any part of the world. So that's that's something that I'm very excited about. <laughs> that's incredible. And I think, you know, as you say things like, hey, there's this like 20 million viewers here that we can tap into. You know, I'm thinking about like, Web3 Gaming is probably just a couple million in general, like across all games right now. It's not very big. So if you get Bullyverse in front of these, you know, big crowds or, or this many eyeballs, how do you guys kind of advertise the game? Is it just, hey, we are putting on these competitions in esports? How much do you think it's important to talk about your NFTs or your tokens and more of the Web3 gaming elements as you do these tournaments and, and competitions? Sure. So, I mean, uh, the way how we are approaching is, uh, one, we want to make the onboarding process fairly easier, simple. Obviously, uh, creating a wallet is uh, not too complicated, but managing the private keys, right? You could you could quickly create a wallet in a couple of clicks, but how are you going to secure your keys? Uh, and like the moment you put money in, then, you know, you need to be careful. So... Uh, so uh, we we are working with a, a sequence wallet to integrate that we already done. So which enables us to onboard uh, uh, Web2 gamers. They can come and create a Web3 wallet using their social login. So using Google Discord or you know their Twitch account, for example. And uh, that co- wallet is completely non-custodial and uh, enables them to come and jump into this Web3 game. And again, uh, for Necrodemic, we're going to make it free to play and introducing a new economic model right so our previous game uh, bear hunt was only for nft holders with a play to mint experience with an acrodemic the experience is going to be free to play but again there are different kinds of benefits you get by having uh, nfts different kinds of special tournaments you could access and also rent it to other players as well down the line so uh, that's the approach we are taking uh, uh, with uh, with these uh, uh, particularly with the DreamHack tournament, we'll be hosting a tournament between uh, top uh, gaming influencers. And usually, like, a lot of gamers, they kind of um, follow the influencers a lot, right? And uh, and as you rightly mentioned, uh, the, the Web3 gaming, uh, it's not the people, but it's the wallets that are interacting, right? We don't know how, how one person, how many wallets they have. And we don't know how many bots are there. And we really don't, we'll never know how many players, people are actually playing uh, Web3 games, what we can potentially look at is how how much uh, 
revenues these protocols are generating could be potentially going forward something that could materialize the growth of these games right uh, but right now we just need to rely on some numbers and those numbers are largely you know could be bots could be uh, could be people having multiple accounts but largely i think the the numbers are very very small right now and that's the opportunity here right you you have new kind of uh, games where people can monetize their uh, play time i mean not like you know uh, it could be fun as well right so uh, so i think that's a potential that uh, exists today and that's the opportunity we're going for i i love that i i also think a, a very interesting topic that i would, I would love to uh, talk a bit more about here is the indian gaming market and and indian esports and competitive uh indian gaming um from from my league of legends history i can't recall any indian league of legends teams i don't know if if india had their own league or whether they participated i don't know if they even have one today i i actually don't believe so but i know that fanatic back a few years ago they hosted some sort of um uh, event in india as one of the first esports team who really started pushing from the um uh, more well known esports teams and i've seen especially in the mobile market and the mobile gaming market that um the indian esporters they're coming and and there's a lot of them so so i'd love to hear like more of your insight for those that don't know or are not familiar with the gaming market and and the potential for esports out of india sure i think uh, i think i i believe that uh, web3 is going to bring a uh, a uh, lot of new people into gaming industry instead of replacing existing only replacing existing gamers into web3 gamers right i think uh, at least uh, initially we are going to bring uh, uh, the more percentage of people that will playing web3 games could be new ones coming into gaming itself right so that's that's potential opportunity here and uh, and uh, there are there are, like one thing i'm very uh bullish about in general is uh uh with the mobile games and uh, the opportunity of bringing uh, new people into this uh, ecosystem right so uh like if you see uh like pubg mobile is quite popular in india and uh obviously if you look at esports i think uh, i would imagine that valorant is valorant is one of the biggest uh, you know uh, uh like games that a lot of folks use for competitions but but yeah in general i think uh, mobile is definitely going to be a, a huge important uh, uh, opportunity and uh, and the regulations and particularly the app store uh, uh, related uh, you know uh, rules and terms and conditions are changing right they are evolving and uh, we we've, we've seen apple has introduced a uh, uh, few uh, things like uh, uh, pricing on buying these nfts so you need to use a uh, apple's payment system which charges you a tax and you know you need to figure out how to work around this but at the end of the day uh it largely is evolving in a positive direction though short term there is going to be a hit for web3 game publishers to uh, to their bottom line where they uh, need to pay extra fees right but at the same time uh, it's 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 an incredible tool to access more people and uh, and uh, as long as you navigate and figure out ways to execute in this uh boundaries so you will be able to get to more players so that's that's something that we are really bullish on our, and our next game uh, which is a multiplayer game is going to be mobile native as well so it's going to be an iOS and Android first and then we we'll launch the PC uh, along with it PC and Mac along with it yeah that's great to hear because i was just about to ask you are you guys working on any mobile games because i know the the bear hunt and the necro you know was on desktop uh, so what is that mobile game going to be like do you guys have you revealed the yeah, so 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 we don't have a name yet so r- right now internally we are calling it as project longhorn and uh, and uh, we have a uh, we potentially looking at an alpha available by end of this year and uh, and that that's right now uh, have uh, like private lobbies where you can invite uh, 24 of your friends and then we'll look at scaling that that's in each single lobby right but we can we can have uh, a million concurrent players playing in different different lobbies so uh, right now the focus is to get a playable version uh, into the hands of our uh, nft community get early feedback by end of this year and then uh, exp- expand that uh, gameplay and add add more content more more uh, features into the game and uh, roll that out 
Cool. Sounds great. Well, Sereni, I know you said before we went live here that you're okay with a hard question. So I got a hard question for you. Okay. Are you you ready? (laughs) So one of the things that I always think about when I see these projects saying, Hey, we're not just building one game, we're building a metaverses, you know, multiple games, we're gonna have, you know, just game after game expand our metaverse. And so I think that's a really cool concept because you can take your NFT from one game to the next game and, you know, just experience multiple things with your one NFT. The the downside I can see, the potential, the, the negative is if you're focusing on so many different games, so many different projects, are you maybe potentially not getting that one really good quality game or, you know, paying attention just to one project so that you can make it the best game possible? So how, how do you think about that balance? Awesome. That's a great question. Uh, and and a hard one for sure. So the way we are looking at it, we built Bear Hunt, right? B- by building Bear Hunt, we built a lot of integrations with respect to the uh, talking to you know a, a blockchain and getting NFT details and showing the user their NFTs, and then creating these ten thousand different unique three D avatars with with different traits, created animations, created weapon mechanics, right? And we used a large chunk of that work for our next game, Necrodamic. Right? It's it's a uh, again like we introduced new uh, new new elements here. While building this new game, we also launched our own native marketplace. We built the smart contracts, backend APIs, front end UX to access the marketplace. Right, all in house. And uh, and with the Necrodamic, uh, we we introduced more features, uh, more tech in house, uh, a wardrobe system to choose your. NFT in-game assets like wearables uh, and uh, on-chain loot boxes and the leaderboard mechanism. So, so a lot of things like um, uh, uh, player player accounts, like you know, potentially leading into more social experience down the line. So, the why I'm explaining this is uh, with every game we are building tech that we are going to leverage forward. So, with the multiplayer game that we are working, one we are building experiences for mobile. We are introducing. Uh, onboarding experiences where you don't need a Web3 wallet, we can create it for you using your social uh, uh, login. And we, this is a multiplayer game, so we'll be building tech for uh, for for uh, enabling uh, such uh, games and experiences. We'll be adding a, a voice chat and other features, social interaction, for social interaction. When you combine all this tech, you're already very close to building a metaverse experience, right? Like you have this uh, massively multiplayer virtual world, you have social to like interaction and you have your own authors and you can interact with f- friends and other community members, host events. So that's that's kind of an experience we could build. And then what else we can do? Like, can we give these tools to other developers and ask them to you know, see what they build? Can we open up the ecosystem? And uh, can we invite independent developers to access this huge audience of Web3 gamers who are already on on this ecosystem? So it's a it's an um, awesome distribution channel, right? Like if you want to build a Web two game, you go to Steam. If you're building a Web three game, where are you going, right? You can't access players today, like unless you do user acquisition completely, come up with a new plan and go to events and you know onboard influencers and do a lot of marketing, infl- like uh, all such things. So we could give all that for new developers to build content, build games, and launch user marketplace, user launchpad and, and a bunch of other tools right so that's what i'm looking at like how we are building tech leading into that future and how each game is going to help us get one step closer to that vision hope, hope i answered your hard, hard question <laughs> yeah no i think that's a, that's a great answer and you know i think part of it i was seeing on your website too that you can as you're saying bring in other developers or you're kind of advertising hey creators come in and build onto our metaverse and so uh, I, I guess I'm kind of picturing, you know, kind of this like uh, either in Fortnite where you go in and you can see all the created games here in one list or in Minecraft, you can jump into different servers and, and try the, the multitude of games that people have already built into their you know metaverse, uh, if you want to call it that. And, and I'm picturing that's kind of what the same is coming for Bullyverse. Am I right? Exactly. So, I mean, uh, today, if you want to build a competitor for Fortnite in Web3, I think the right approach is not a building a game that takes another couple of years to you know develop. I think the right approach is to start with something very simple. You know, everybody wants to add all the cool things, A modes and a lot of functionality into the game, right? Adds, adds time, effort, and increases your timelines to put this experience in the hands of community. And you don't know if they like it or not. So the best approach is to, you know, 
continue to deliver in bits like with a minimum gameplay add 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 new features add a social interaction play, uh, uh soul bond tokens to uh, for player progression experiment with lot of web3 tech while you are doing that you know content part with, with the games so that's the approach uh, i think is the is the right approach but you know we'll see in a couple of phases which is the right one so the approach that we are taking is to continuously iterate and build with the community i i love that i think that's uh Thank you. something when we've been doing our research and looking into games for the last year um something that we always uh put a lot of effort into is to checking up on the transparency of the project and you know the credibility and our recommendations for all games as well is to you know give timestamp updates like the the more progression you can show continuously just prove that you're doing something and uh you're taking it to the next level by yeah we don't have a finished product but come try it you know you're opening it up and you're including the community and i think that's that's how you get those early early users who become you know your, your adversary fans, no? yeah 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 hardcore yeah. fans and and they just push your project and word by mouth and um they're going to be the most loyal players that you're ever going to get um yeah no i i love that approach so yeah we took it to another extent as well like uh, uh a lot of our team members in believers they've they've actually minted an nft and then they become our community member in the discord seeing our demos and work we are doing and then they joined our team like our game director right he's he's from our community and uh, our head of community and growth is from our community and i'm super proud to share this because uh, what we essentially did was uh, we didn't launch a 10000 pfp collection we launched our vision and we said guys this is where we are going and people who believed and uh, liked it jumped and joined the team and to build you know to be part of that building our Uh, our uh, spaceship right so so doing all the hard work today so yeah that's 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 really the power of web3 you know like uh, you could you could u- use your nfts in multiple ways you could use it to rug people or you could use to bring your vision to life we we took the latter approach <laughs> <laughs> i hope so good yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so um to 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 bring it back to the start uh all of your games have as uh, some sort of reference to bulls uh the animal a bull with horns um wh- what's this all about what's the story behind that yeah so um like the reason why it's bull right uh like we call it as believer like in a sense like a like a believer right in in nfts and gaming let's say and uh and uh, we wanted a heroic character right Uh, with with uh, strong arms you know like uh, we we are building a bunch of uh, shooter games that's that's pretty much uh, was uh, the initial idea to build shooter games probably we'll do more casual games and maybe hyper casual games down the line but uh, uh, wanted a heroic character wanted uh, something that uh, we could create lore and you know uh, get community excited even before uh, we have a game so bull and bear are iconic characters and we wanted to create a game around that like you know it, it quickly becomes a uh kind of uh, stories that community members tell to each other create memes you know uh, create a, a fun kind of a dialogue in discord and uh, and also uh, the whole bear hunt where you you go find bear uh, shoot and then get a bear and after as a reward like you know it's, it 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 we thought it was quite a cool idea to start building this and then we we see how it evolves from there right Yeah, I I like it. I think it's really kind of a fun thing to do and, you know, especially in this market, you guys are kind of the last bulls left. I mean, everyone else is <laughs> doom really. and gloom, <laughs> all bearish, you know. Um which you know, I I do want to hear from you, you know, are there certain lessons that you guys have learned in this bear market and I think a lot of people, you know, I I read tweets and articles all the time that are like, "Oh, we're in this bear market. A lot of these games pumped out of nowhere last year and you know in a couple of years they're all going to be dead and gone they're not going to survive this bear market uh what what is your response to that what is your take on on this market and how does that affect you guys at bullyverse so i mean uh, when we launched our nft collection right after that 
there was a massive nft bull run right that didn't end up really good for us like so much noise every day people are trying to mint the next new big thing right and too much uh, pressure on the team on when we'll get a game like you know building an unreal engine game is not easy building anything in web3 with smart contracts is not easy and managing a community is not easy and you are doing multiple complex things at once and then the the whole uh, market is vibing like you know uh, some of the collections are like pumping like crazy right so it it puts a lot of pressure on the team to deliver and uh, keep the community you know engaged while there is so much chatter it's hard, hard to get distracted right but we want to keep our community active and stay focused and believe in our vision then the bear market comes we launched our token this time right it got listed in kucoin hobby quite a good reception uh, on the initial launch after that quickly terra exploded uh, and then you know we we saw what happened with 3ac and a lot of contagion on the market uh, with celsius and a lot of uh, cfi institutions going bankrupt we we didn't predict that and uh, and obviously the the noise has gone and now people are not interested so now it's another challenge to keep the community active engaged with what we are building right so you, you will not have a right time to do things these market cycles will always be there so extremely bullish is not not good for you extremely bearish is not good for you the only thing that you can do is to focus on your vision focus on your mission and then keep the community you know informed like do beyond what you could do to keep them informed like you're going to get delayed uh, th- those are the things like uh, i definitely uh, probably if i'm doing this again or go back into the future like i would take time to explain our community that building this first game is not so easy like you know uh, we are a brand new studio we, were, we assembled a, quite a good team we are playing with a lot of uh, challenging tech we are working incredibly hard but still it is a complex thing but we managed to come out of the other end of it like we launched the game we proved the people who said we are not going to do and rugging this right wrong and uh, we continue to build the other game which is which is now live in beta and, and then there is another one coming end of this year in alpha so so yeah i mean uh, right now it it looks very you know e- like easy uh, for us at this point right but it's not easy like that uh, it's 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 always been a challenge and i foresee that it's going to be challenge but we'll continue to focus on a mission keep a community motivated like we get new people joining our ecosystem as we go along and uh, you know the, the plan is to bring a new you know gamers into web3 nfts bring a uh, 1 million new people into crypto so that's that's my ultimate mission right so i'm a big believer in this tech so uh, gaming is potent has a huge potential there and uh, yeah that's 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 what i'm looking forward to Sereni, I think I got to be honest with you, that was probably the some of the best wisdom we've had on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, it, I can Thank just you. tell by what you're by what you're responding with that you've been in this crypto space for quite some time. And I, I think that's just really good wisdom for anyone in this space, right? There is no good key magic time that is going to fix all your problems, right? There's there's pros and cons to a bull market. There's pros and cons to a bear market. And as long as you're smart and you keep building, that's what's going to you know bring that long term success. So I love that vision you guys are building out there. And keep staying in touch with your community. Like uh, before you joined the call and before we started this podcast, me and Luke was just discussing another project. Uh, I won't name it, but it was a really good looking project. And at some point they just stopped giving updates. I hope that they're still building, but I just don't know. And nobody in the community knows. And it's like, you're never going to be able to rebuild that bridge when you just leave and people are people can forgive anything just just give updates just keep talking to your community be open be honest share progress share pictures you know jump on interviews like come with updates like do whatever you can it matters that even if you lose 50% of your followers the remaining 50% they're likely to stay there if you keep going and, and those are the ones that matters and it's just yes it is difficult yes it does require time yes it does require energy but i feel like you lose so much if you don't maintain your community and even if your community reduces it is still worth its weight in gold so i yeah i 
appreciate and agree very heavily with what you said and and it's something that we see consistently and also uh, what we've seen during the entire bear market is that the projects that keep a high transparency maintain the majority of their followers and have a happier community and also are more likely to get sales if they do any sort of NFT, NFT sales. Like the, the amount of information that people can find out about your project directly impacts your selling power if you are selling now. So, um, no, yeah, I, I, uh, I love that. Thank you very much. Yeah, def definitely. It's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, my own personal, uh, what to say, uh, opinion to that is, uh, it's it's de it's definitely going to these interviews and uh, uh, or going to an event, meeting people, spreading spreading a word about what you're building, is is hard, right? I mean, as a founder, I one thing that I have very limited access to is uh, an extra hour time, right? So so we all are bound to, bound by that, and uh, and uh, like if somebody gives gives me an half an hour time of their time, you know, uh, even to do a, do a small catch up meeting, I I feel that. Uh, incredibly what thankful for them right so is the same goes with my time as well and uh and uh yeah as a founder it's important that you do these things like i'm, I'm quite an introvert and uh you know this this is against my natural way where i go and talk to people and uh, share my ideas but i have to do it right do it for the community i do it for uh, the vision that i want to bring to life uh, though it is hard so yeah and uh and particularly thank you to both of you for making it you know much easier for me to share share what is there in my mind and uh, i'm looking forward to my talk in nft uh, london as well right <laughs> on 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 thursday this week so yeah i mean definitely like you should you should definitely go and talk about what you're building otherwise nobody will know i love that uh yeah i, I wanted to ask i, I think we haven't uh, talked about your team size uh, and your more expanded team we've talked a bit about different team members that you picked up from the community how large is Bulliver's team right now? What sort of roles are you hiring? What sort of roles are you looking for? Uh, and how is it looking for the next couple of months, like team size wise? So uh, something that we are mindful with from the beginning was uh, to to really focus on the culture uh, fit into the team. And uh, hiring someone from community is quite easy. Like, you know, the reason is... Uh, they already believe in your vision, right? And uh, they're coming here because uh, they want to be part of this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's such an amazing uh, way for uh, getting people, but you can't find every, like all the different kinds of skills and you want to, to build uh, things like, you know, games and uh, Web3 stuff. So uh, what we did was uh, like, we started bringing people as, uh, you know, freelancers. And then uh, once we see a culture fit, we kind of, uh, get them as a permanent, you know, like uh, longer term commitment into the team. And uh, and uh, like initially we had some um, aggressive timelines for us to deliver the game. So we, we kind of took this approach, which worked well. Like we figured out who is, who is, whose strength is what. And then uh, ultimately end of the day, you should be in a, like as a founder, like what you want to do is to bring, you know, talented people and then let them do what they love to do, right? Uh, and empower them to do it. So as long as you do that, right? I think that's that's pretty much your half job done. So, and and that's that's pretty much what we did. Like you know, we 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 got a lot of people from uh, in, team in India as well, like who come from uh, one of the prestigious institutions in India, which is IIT, and uh, they they've left their offers from Microsoft and, and other big companies and joined a very small startup like Believers, right? Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's such an honor to even say that these these uh, young people they believe in what we're building and want to take part in this. Yeah, and, and I mean the why it happened was actually when we were working on the NFTs art and uh, initial promos. We obviously bootstrapping with our own costs, right? So we wanted to get uh, you know fine layer college grads from top Indian institutions, so. You know the costs are minimal, but you get the best of the best uh, skills on on board. So that's pretty much uh, how those guys got involved early, and then they don't want to go back. Like you know, they want don't want to go to any other 
big office they want to stick here and continue building this which which proves a point that you know we have an amazing culture and we want to make sure that that's preserved so in terms of uh, uh, new new hirings like pretty much we are looking for getting uh, engineers for building uh, the tech on the multiplayer uh, aspects uh, for for the new game and also looking into the future right so we want to add a lot of social tools as well that that we can leverage co- going down the line so we we hired uh, uh, some engineers from uh, zynga and uh, moonfrog and which are like one of the big uh, game publishers based out of india so you got a lot of lot of uh, talented people in different parts of the world we are a remote team so we could hire from anywhere but we, but we are making sure that you know that that culture fit is there that is important as well yeah, it's good to hear about the team and what you guys got planned ahead for bringing on more members. Uh, I'm excited for Bullyverse. I just want to hear kind of, can you give us some teases as well, uh, not just about the team, but about the project as a whole? Uh, anything coming up in the next couple of months that we should be excited about as gamers? Yeah, so I think uh, definitely the one most important thing is uh, we are launching a $25,000 uh, uh, tournament prize pool tournament uh, which is going to happen in first or second week of december and all the there will be a bunch of smaller competitions that will happen over the next month uh, with different gaming guilds with esports orgs with uh, uh, we are also hosting a few tournaments in gaming key for cafes as well we are hosting an event in london so there will be different smaller smaller tournaments and the way we are looking at is uh, you know how we can empower, empower anybody in this world in any part of this world to quickly create a uh, Web3 uh, championship tournament, right? We give them all tools. We give them the game as well. So they could even monetize that. You know, how cool is that? So we want to go in that direction and explore with Necrodemic and see what happens. Uh, and uh, definitely the big tournament, $25,000 prize pool, is something very interesting. So if you're a gamer, join there and uh, and compete with other, other, other Web3 gamers and Web2 gamers. Apart from that, uh, yeah, so we, we, we are looking to kind of add multiplayer capabilities uh, down the line to, to the games that we build. So, uh, and going to mobile and uh, to iOS and Apple as well. Potentially Steam Deck, that looks quite cool. Like uh, we, 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 we are finding ways on how we can reach more gamers, you know, make it much easier for them to come and join. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what what's coming next. Uh, what do you need to do to join the tournament? Like, if I want to join the tournament, what what do I need to do? Run me through it. Yeah, so you got to go to app.bullivers.com, our website. So, and uh, sign up and create an account. That's all. So we'll we'll uh, remind you when the to- tournament starts, and uh, just play, okay. download, Simple and play. Simple enough. The game. How, how <laughs> do you guys reward? Is it within your own token, or are you guys paying out in a different the way? The prize pool will have multiple things. Like there will be uh, USDC uh, tokens, NFTs as well. And uh, and also like raffle tickets as well. So uh, you even if you are not ranking at the number t- number one, right? By participating and hitting a minimum score, you could get an uh, you know raffle ticket and some prizes with that. So like you know rewarding as many of them as possible, but also at the same time making it very interesting for top prizes as well. I think that's key. Yeah. yeah, it's key, but I also like that you guys are doing the raffles because uh, I don't think I'll ever hit the top of the leaderboard with the skills that I have. So. <laughs> well, that's good, Luke. So you can try for the raffle and I'll try for the number one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you and the rest of the alpha team, you guys take the leaderboard. I'll, I'll get the raffles. <laughs> well, yeah. That's great. Uh, any other, I don't, you're talking about gameplay. Is there any excitement or uh any potential sales coming up as far as land? Are you guys doing any more NFTs or, or things on the roadmap coming soon? Or is that kind of uh, further out in the future? Yeah, one thing our community are excited about is uh, our new collection. Like we had, a, we we keep getting uh, some chatter around that. But really, even with the with respect to land sale, right? Uh, we, uh, we want to build tech first and then do the land sale after and not sale before and tech first uh, and uh, that's that that will be one of the reasons why the land sale would happen when these people who are buying the land can experience and see how it is going to be and i'm sure they're going to be thrilled but with the new collection uh, obviously we're looking at uh, 
the mobile game and introduce uh, some kind of a character that we could leverage particularly with mobile casual games down the line as well so that's something that we are actively pursuing but uh, really the focus right now is to make necrodemic a huge success like get more players on board create the distribution channel that doesn't exist in web3 today and uh, and uh, that's that's a laser focus and any kind of sale is not at top priority for the team right now great well, best of luck to you guys and the team, and Thank I'm you. excited to see what's ahead. Uh, I, I think that's most of the questions I had. Nico, anything else that was on your mind? Yeah, I think we're crossing about 45 minutes here, if I'm correct. Uh, I think I, I guess a good place to leave off is that you kind of in a in a sneaky way mentioned that you were speaking at NFT London this week. Um, this is being recorded on the 1st of November, so that is thursday the 3rd of november um th this might be released after that but uh, can you talk like just for a minute about um what's happening there what are you going to be talking about and and why is that important so um what i'm excited about is obviously uh you will you will get all the people who love nfts right and i love nfts i i uh the reason why i bullish on this tech is that uh, it can empower people to have a uh, digital ownership right property access to digital assets that's otherwise not possible with web 2 and uh, you're going to see like like-minded people who are interested in this space uh, that's something that i'm really excited and uh, the plan is to we'll have a booth we'll showcase our games that we built people can come and play them and see for themselves and uh, the talk is pretty much, it's a, it's a short talk, so I'm going to talk about what we built, like pretty much what we covered in this call, right? Uh, and uh, share 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 the passion, you know, and uh, see, see if anybody gets inspired uh, and want to come and join us or, you know, like some, you know, any, any feedback questions. Uh, like ultimately, this is very, very, very early stages in this whole new ecosystem, right? And uh, nobody has answers for all the questions we are all figuring out we are all trying to learn we are all experimenting some things will fail some things will become huge successes and uh, the only thing that you could do is to keep trying keep uh, asking keep uh, you know sharing what you know getting feedback that's exactly what we are going to do i appreciate that thank you thank you very much for the for the time yeah, Both no, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Serini. It was great talking to you, hear more about Bolliverse. I could definitely tell your passion for the project. Your honesty today was great and just really appreciate those answers. So uh, thanks for helping our community understand Bolliverse. Uh, last thing, where would you point people listening to come and find you guys? Uh, your website, Discord, Twitter, what, what's the best place to connect with Bolliverse? Yeah, the Discord is the best place. That's where uh, like, uh, we have these... Uh, public beach like we we imagine our discord as a as an island right uh, a metaverse island we all are like living as citizens there so if you have an nft and verify your uh, ownership you get access to a private island so where you can talk to other citizens and uh, otherwise you can pop over to the beach talk to you know everybody else there that, but that's a place to come and hang out and figure out our uh, if you have any questions, our community will be more than happy to answer them. They've always been helping, helpful for new people joining the ecosystem. So that's that's a place to go. And you can find the links on our website, Twitter. Perfect. We'll link those all in the video and podcast information below. But uh, awesome. Serini, thanks again. Super fun having you. Love the ideas that you guys are bringing out here today. And hopefully we'll hear from you again sometime later. Sure. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I mean, great, great work you guys are doing with uh, Balthazar and, uh, you know, the research work that go goes into this space. It's quite important, right? And uh, with so many projects and coming up uh, every day, it's quite hard to figure out what is, you know, uh, what is what. And uh, you guys are doing the hard job. I think very critical for a nascent space, uh, which is just, you know, going to become, going to grow now. So I appreciate you guys for what you're doing and really thankful for bringing me onto the stage and, you know, uh, asking hard questions as well. And uh, hopefully, you know, it, it went well. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode. If you stayed this long, then please go check out Bullyverse. Links will be in the description. And as well on Balthazar's website, you can find more resources, including our launch pad and our research. But for now, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys at one of these other videos around me. Thank you, Salamat Gracias, for tuning in. I'll see you over there.